There have never been more great choices in the hardware synthesizer market than in 2023, but with all the options, it can be hard to know what the right synthesizer is for you. Hello, I'm Vulture Culture, and these are my top picks for hardware synths in 2023. And because every user is different, I've broken it up into different categories that you can see down below the different chapters based on what you need out of a synthesizer. But before we get started, here are some kittens that are perilously close to being pushed into an alligator pit, and the only way to save them is to hit that subscribe button below the video. Ah, doesn't that feel good? You're a moral hero. You save the kittens. <laughs> So to start, the first category is the best gift for a beginner synthesis. So maybe you have a son or a daughter, niece or nephew, crazy uncle who's getting into synthesizers. What would be the perfect, easy on the budget gift to get them as a stocking stuffer this year? And the winner is the Korg Volca Keys. So when I was looking at this synthesizer for $129, it's actually insane, the value here, because you have three oscillators, a voltage controlled filter, MIDI in so you can control it from another key bed or a sequencer. It's a really big, awesome sounding package with a bunch of different features for $129. So as far as like getting an all analog synthesizer for less than $150, it's, it's pretty much unheard of. And I think it's a really awesome value synth that a lot of people have forgotten about. It has three note polyphony and motion sequencing and a host of other features I wouldn't think were possible at this price point and form factor. It's just a really cool synth, and if you have a special somebody that you're thinking, hey, I think that they would like to get into synths, this might be just the thing for them. Next up, we have the best budget or best value analog mono synth, and that has to go to the Moog Mavis Semi-Modular Analog Synthesizer Kit. For $349 to get that authentic Moog sound in a semi-modular little package like this is pretty amazing, and of course, what makes this instrument special, it is Moog's first foray into so-called West Coast synthesis with a wave folder. So you can really smash those triangle waves. And it's also semi-modular, which we have a semi-modular category, but there are better options if you wanna go very budget in that category. And I thought this was, for the value, a really great price point, pretty incredible price point for the Moog synthesis world. So if you wanna get some of that Moog sound, this might be a really great way to do it on a budget. And the winner of the best analog mono synth for two years in a row is the Dreadbox Typhon. Now, the reason I'm going with this synthesizer is I think it is an incredible value, 449, pretty insane because it is two voltage controlled oscillators with sine vibes effects and just all of that Dreadbox glory that we've come to love. You can see that you can smoothly morph between all of these different waves and as well as having FM there on that big yellow center knob and this interface face is really elegant and what we've come to expect from the Greek Titans that are Dreadbox. Now, of course, there's other analog monos around this price point, but I think the inclusion of those awesome sign vibes effects, who also make the effects for, say, all of the log range of Korg synths, it really makes a complete package where you don't need other processing to make it sound good like you do with a lot of dry analog mono synths. This thing is a fully fledged instrument that you you don't need anything more than just this. And I think it's also got those charismatic oscillators and yeah, just a really awesome package at an awesome price point. Moving on to the best value on a budget semi-modular synths, we've got the Create Audio East Beast and West Pest. Now these are actually cheaper than the Moog Mavis, which won best budget monophonic analog, but I thought they were best fitted to this category. These are an insane price point for the features. One thing to note, is that those buttons at the bottom function as a key bed. There is so much going on with the sequencer. There's so much going on with the Pittsburgh modular filter that's in the center there. And what you can do with both of these synths is either have a really great, I guess you could say 303 style synth, or with the West Pest, you have that introduction to West Coast synthesis that we are all really excited about. I think these synths represent an incredible price point from a company that's shown us nothing but quality. And the these are really cool products coming from them and they're just awesome and at 250 they are an incredible incredible value and they just sound great they are really thick analog oscillators and man i want to get my hands on some of these and all of the options with 
the patching on the right on the patch bay there. Just really, really cool. Sounds great out of the box, but once you plug things in, it gets even more interesting. Moving on to the best small form factor analog semi-modular synth, we have the Korg MS-20 Mini. Now I have right here a real vintage Korg MS-20 that's over 40 years old that we'll be checking out on this channel soon. But one of the things that I realized when I was playing with the synthesizer is why it has such a legacy. The layout of this synthesizer is really great because it is small, but you have access to a whole lot of powerful control and the sound of the filters is unparalleled, perhaps in any synth ever made. I love the combination of high pass and low pass filters with that beautiful screaming resonance that is so characteristic to the synthesizer and Korg did a really amazing job recreating this and at a price point of $500 $49. It's available for most people to be able to get and I just think that's a beautiful thing to put maybe one of the most famous vintage synthesizers in the hands of so many people. They could have charged a lot more for this, <coughs> but they didn't and I think that's really awesome of Korg. You still have, in addition to a really great monophonic analog synthesizer, this great patch bay on the right which lets you do all sorts of cool things like sample and hold and routing external audio in, all sorts of cool stuff. But you also have the niceties of MIDI and all those other things that you don't have in a vintage synthesizer. So good on you, Korg. Moving on to the best in class, big form factor, semi-modular analog synthesizer. It's got to be the Moog Matriarch. So what I love about this synthesizer is the way that they've laid out the synth where it almost feels like a Eurorack synth where you've got different modules and you can do all sorts of really great routing. And the most important part is that it sounds amazing. Everyone I know who has one of these rants and raves about it. These are beautiful instruments by the king of synthesizer manufacturers, Moog. I think this is a very fair price point for a flagship synthesizer from this company, and it is really great. With four analog VCOs, you can play this synth monophonically, duophonically, or paraphonically, so you actually have the ability to play four notes at the same time. You've got that wonderful Moog ladder filter. I think it's just a really amazing synth, and I really hope hope that you consider this if you're thinking about getting into semi-modular synthesis. There was a time where you needed a big, bad, all analog polysynth to get those classic synth tones. But nowadays, the hybrid and digital synths sound great. And so to kick things off, the best budget or value digital synth is the Roland JX08 recreation of their famous JX8P vintage synthesizer. In the past, I've stayed away from recommending the Roland boutiques, but the new generation comes with expensive expanded polyphony. And so the JX08 actually has 20 notes of polyphony, which is awesome. And it's also by Tambrel, which almost makes it more of a recreation of the famous JX10 vintage synthesizer, which was inherently by Tambrel. Anyways, I think for 350 bucks, this is a whole lot of digital analog recreation by Roland that they were able to stuff into this little box. I think the sound of two DCOs through a Roland chorus is the most famous synth architecture there is and I think that this is a really great price point for people who are new to the game to get a awesome awesome recreation of one of my favorite vintage synthesizers of all time but with all of the functionality of modern synths. And now, drum roll please, what I consider to be the most incredible synth of 2023 is the, you guessed it, Mini Freak Hybrid Analog Digital Synthesizer from Arturia. I predict this to be the killer synth of the year. The magnificent oscillators are from Eurorack Legends Mutable Instruments, and those going through really amazing analog filters is a winning combination as far as I'm concerned. Six notes of polyphony at $600 is killer. Killer. When you consider how flexible the digital oscillators are and the fact that it's less than half of a sequential take five in price, it's hard to think they're not going to sell millions of these things. It really is everything you could want out of a synthesizer and it's at a price that I thought was unthinkable. So hats off to you Arturia, this will make you guys a lot of money and I would love to get my hands on one of these. Now if that's not enough for you, we have the best in class big form factor hybrid analog synthesizer which would be the Novation Summit. This 
this is the biggest and baddest analog filter digital oscillator combo on the market right now. You've got three FPGA new Oxford oscillators, which are digital, really high octane oscillators being fed into really great analog filters that are, I believe, modeled on the Oscar. And you've got a wavetable editor. You've got wavetables by artists like Noisia. The new 2.0 update enables you to be able to use polyphonic aftertouch uh, sent to it. Unfortunately, the keybed itself doesn't support that, but the Summit really is more than Twin Peaks, and it is an incredible high-end synthesizer if you're into that hybrid architecture, which for me is my favorite category of synth. Which brings us to our next topic, polyphonic aftertouch. I've decided to make it its own category this year because it's a feature that a lot of people are interested in right now. So these are my picks on what I think are the best synths to go for based off of budget and form factor. If you're on a budget, but you want some poly aftertouch, you really can't beat the Hydrosynth Explorer. So this is a fully featured Hydrosynth hidden inside this little box and it has polyphonic aftertouch. So if you're not trying to take out a second mortgage on your house, this could be a really great way to get access to the expanded expression you get from poly aftertouch and the incredible Hydrosynth engine that just sounds amazing. And a lot of people knocked on me for missing this last year. It is a really fully featured package that's stripped down in a very smart way from the big boys of the Hydrosense, and I think it's a really great thing, especially if you're short on space. This is a really great product for you. Now, the best bang for your buck polyphonic aftertouch synth is going to be the Hydrosynth Deluxe. With 73 keys and effectively two Hydrosynth engines stacked on top of each other, it's hard not to see the value in what might be one of the greatest digital synthesizers of all time. And finally, the best in class polyphonic aftertouch synthesizer would be the Waldorf Iridium Keys. Now, this is a very expensive synthesizer, but if you can afford it, then this would be bar none the greatest polyphonic synth. One of the problems with the Hydrosynth Deluxe that I've been hearing from a lot of YouTube comments has been that people don't like the key bed all that much. It feels a little plasticky. So if you want a truly premium instrument, this is a digital synth that'll make you forget about analog synthesis. It's got many different engine types like granular synthesis and FM that's been thought out in a very smart way. Perhaps one of the best interfaces of any synth and that awesome touch screen. It is a monster of a synthesizer and it's a synth I'm always going to lust after, but I'm just not sure I could ever commit to spending that much money on a synth. For some of us, nothing but analog will do. And for that reason, I've split my picks for analog poly synths into four different categories. That's going to be the best budget analog poly synth, the best small form factor analog poly synth, the best value analog poly synth, and the best in class dream analog poly synth. So the best budget analog poly synth is the Korg Minilog XD one once again, this is still what I consider to be the best value on the market if you're into analog synthesis because you have four voices of voltage controlled, not digitally controlled analog oscillators, as well as that third voice, which could be an entire synth engine on its own. The user oscillators are so powerful and so underrated. People don't talk about them because they don't ship with these synths, but there's a bunch of free ones out there and the ones that aren't free are not very expensive. And that is so cool that the Log SDK is open source and people can make their own stuff and they sound great. That going into that incredible Korg filter that I love so much and the awesome Korg effects. So although the next synth, the small form factor analog poly is actually cheaper than this one, I think that this is great because it's a complete package. You've got keys, you've got effects, so you don't have to buy extra things. This right here is enough to make awesome synth music without anything else. You could get just this or the mini freak and make awesome synth music and never need another thing. Just a really awesome, great synthesizer. I love the Korg Prologue, but I think the mini log XD is just an unbeatable value. Now, if you're pressed for space, the Dreadbox Nymphes is an incredible synthesizer. It's actually cheaper than my budget pick. The only reason I went for the XD is because this has a mono reverb on it, but that's it for effects. The XD has a lot more effects and it makes it more flexible. So this is a very specific and glorious vintage sounding flavor of analog synthesis, but it's not quite as flexible 
flexible as the XD is in terms of covering all of your bases. Having said that, you really can't beat this sort of Juno 6 type architecture and really simple interface that they've created, but it's very powerful. One of the standout features is the polyphonic LFOs. So you could like key track those and have different notes have different LFO rates. It's just a really amazing Dreadbox synthesizer. I can't help it. I'm a fanboy. I think that these Greek gods know what they're doing when it comes to making cool, charismatic synths. And this thing is your one stop ticket to Vangelis Town. It is the awesome Dreadbox synthesizer that a lot of us have been wanting and $500 is nothing for a synth of this quality. Pairing this with a Typhon would be a hell of a powerful combination. Once again, the Sequential Take 5 takes the best value analog polysynth. So this is five voltage controlled sequential oscillators. It really seems like Sequential has found its stride with making an amazing polysynth that's still at a price point that a lot of people can afford. Board. It's a little bit smaller than their bigger synths. It's got a little bit of a grayer interface, but overall this synth sounds really great and it's hard to argue with this value because it is everything you could want from an analog poly synth. It's got effects, it's got a sequencer, it's got that famous Dave Smith interface and I'm so glad this is on the market. It really feels like Dave Smith's gift to the synthesizer world. It is a very reasonably priced analog poly that gives you that profit type sound, but with all the modern features you could want, it's really a masterclass in design. I think this synth is just great, and if there was a synth that I had to buy to go on tour, just like a one synth that's reasonable, it's not too expensive, and that you know could just basically cover every ground you need, the best in class analog poly synth had to be none other than the Oberheim OBX8. This is the first synthesizer from Oberheim in 40 years, and it is a glorious return. I hesitate to recommend anything that costs $5,000 because there's so many great synthesizers on the market, but this does have that sound of Oberheim that is so special and so unique. And it's got the ability to change all the different modules parts out. So if you want to have the filters from the OBXA, but the oscillators from the OBX and the envelopes from the OB8, you can do that. And of course you also have the SEM filter, so you can do those glorious notch Oberheim pads. And it's just a muscle car of a synth. It is giant and delicious and amazing and there's just something magical about the way those Oberheim synths sound. It is meticulous in how they recreated everything. It is the most honest recreation I've seen of a vintage synthesizer. You can hear Marcus Ryle play this up against an OBXA, an OB8, an OBX and hear that they sound identical. It just is an incredible synthesizer. It comes with a massive price tag once again i think everybody knows that about it it's really really great but it sounds spectacular it just has a magic to it that i've never heard from anything but a vintage synthesizer and by the way vintage obx's obxas ob8s they all go for like over 10 12 grand nowadays so it's in some sense still cheaper to get this than it is to buy a vintage which is kind of cool which brings me to a new category this year the most overpriced synthesizer of the year award has to go to the Moog Mini Moog Model D reissue. Once again, they're reissuing the Model D, and this time it's five grand. Now, I understand that synthesizers cost a lot, but this just seems so gratuitous and over the top when you compare it to something like the Oberheim OBX8, which already feels gratuitous and over the top. A single voice of a synthesizer, it just doesn't make sense to spend this much money. It doesn't really make makes sense to spend that much money on an OBX8, but at least you can sort of justify it. The Mini Moog has so many clones, not least of which would be something like the Model D, which goes for 350 bucks. This thing sounds great. Maybe it doesn't sound 100%, but it's like 99% of the way there for a fraction of the cost. I think this is such a misstep by Moog. This is, I'm sure it's gonna be a great thing, but
but why would anybody do this to themselves? I think it's just silly. Finally, moving on to the biggest IDGAF Synth of the Year award goes to the Sequential Trigon 6. Now, I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for saying this because it's Dave Smith's last synth that he worked on, but hear me out real quick. Sequential has a problem with product differentiation. They have a lot of products that have flooded the market that all have very similar features. You've got the Take 5, the Profit 5, the Profit Rev 2, the Profit X, the Profit 6, the OB6, which has the same voice cards as the Profit 6 and the Trigon 6. You've got the Pro 3. They just have a lot of synths that are very similar, and I feel like the Trigon is just more of the same. I know that it has a ladder filter in it. That's cool. I also don't really care that much. I don't love ladder filters myself. Maybe you do. Um, it's a cool synth. It's another Profit 6 voice card synth. The price is up there, but I'm not surprised by that. That's okay. I don't mind Sequential and Moog charging more for synths as long as people will pay for it. But the thing is, is I just have trouble really feeling like I care about this. There's just so many cool synthesizers at a better price point. This doesn't quite feel as premium as the vintage reissues like the OBX8 and the Profit 5, and it doesn't feel as interesting as a Profit Rev 2 to me. I'd rather have that synth for about half the price than this one. Again, I'm really sorry to be saying this about Dave Smith's last creation. It's just not that compelling to me. I think there's going to be better synthesizers made by Sequential in the future, but for me, this is not the one. So if you made it this far in the video, I salute you. I'm Vulture Culture and I love synthesizers. You can see I have a lot of them in this room. I do a live stream every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. And if you have any thoughts on my picks for the year, I'd love to hear about it from you. Please come and hang out. It's always a fun time. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.